Hello, this is Brian Bargenbrook of the National Weather Service in Topeka. I'm also a member of the Central Region DSS demonstration team, and I've been closely involved with the techniques and development process of these DSS baseline tools for management of decision support for large events. Today I wanted to take this opportunity to provide a more detailed overview of the tools that we'll be rolling out to all of Central Region. This includes a calendar and logging functions, as well as the ability to plot these events in AWIPS, and we'll also discuss some of the actions and procedures that we'll go through in order to provide this decision support service. There are several elements that we'll be rolling out. For starters, we're going to be supporting the goal of scheduled one-to-one -one remote and on-site decision support services. Some of the tools we'll use for this include the D DSS request form, a DSS calendar, DSS logging capabilities, and also the DSS plotting in AWIPS 2. We're also working on the development of some additional tools to enhance situational awareness for these events, and we look forward to continued development over the coming year. It's been discussed in previous webinars, but you might still be asking, why are we implementing these tools? Well, this type of one-to-one -one DSS is really an outstanding opportunity for us as meteorologists to use our expertise along with the expertise of our local emergency management officials for the safety of what ends up being highly vulnerable populations. The tools that we're rolling out here merely help us achieve this goal. They do this first and foremost simply by giving us better tools to help provide our day-to-day -day DSS they also help us more formally organize, provide, and document this DSS, especially for these scheduled events. It provides a standard process and tools for service backup. Most of these tools are accessible off-site, and they also track and create a record of the decision support services requested by key partners for large and vulnerable events. Of course, by having the same tools and procedures, will also improve the consistency and communications from office to office, event to event, shift to shift, and even from each individual office to our partners. And also along the way we'll be increasing our situational awareness of those large and vulnerable events that are ongoing in our CWAs. Again, what we're focusing on here is scheduled on-site and or remote decision support services. These are intended to be from the National Weather Service to our emergency management partners in a one-to-one -one fashion, but for the goal of the safety of many people. These services are provided based on requests from our core partners, as well as coordination with those core partners and WFO resources. This also tends to include a high level of interaction of the National Weather Service with those key decision makers. Let's dive into the details of some of these tools that we'll be rolling out. The first uh, to be addressed by anyone is the request form. This is a standard link for our emergency management partners in order to request support for their scheduled events. The information that they provide us through the form automatically populates a calendar for us to use at the National Weather Service. It also sends email notifications to us uh, in the National Weather Service and also provides forecast information via email to our partners who requested the support. The information in the calendar is ported to a log where we can log all of the support that we do provide in a very simple way and also provides the information to AWIPS that allows us to plot these events over the top of things like radar imagery and lightning. All of these tools will help us in our effort to support the one-to-one -one DSS for the safety of many. To spell out the process in a bit more detail, again, the emergency management community requests decision support for their large events via the Google form from a standard link. The request information populates the DSS calendar, sends email notifications to an NWS email list, sends event-specific forecast information emails to the event POC, and populates the DSS log while also plotting this information in AWIPS. Then WFO management or designated staff confirms the request with the requesting POC. They review the event needs and determine the level of support that the NWS can provide for their event. 
if we dive in a little deeper yet, starting with step one, the submission of information via the Google Form. This is at least the beginning of the form that emergency managers will be able to fill out. They'll go to a standard website available to them, submit the information, and upon doing so, they'll receive a confirmation of their request as well as that location-specific forecast and NWS contact information. Again, this is all automatically sent, sent to them. National Weather Service contacts are also immediately notified of the request via email. And from that point, DSS details can be coordinated between the partners and the WFO. If you'd like to see the full-scale example of this Google Form, feel free to check out the link at the bottom right hand of the slide. Now we'll address a few frequently asked questions regarding the form. First, who actually receives the event support request form? Well, this form is sent to the emergency management community. And this includes emergency managers, but also their other local, state, or federal government agencies that perform emergency management functions during events. This could include law enforcement, fire, state emergency management, you name it. Another question, what information is included in the DSS request? Well, the requesting official will submit information including the name, location, dates, and hours of operation of the event, the approximate attendance, preferred means of communication, and also information regarding particular hazards, vulnerabilities, and thresholds that they may have. For instance, a severe thunderstorm warning is obviously for winds greater than 58 miles per hour, but at an event with a lot of lightweight tents, you might find that winds to 30 miles per hour are an extremely important threshold for them. What types of events are typically supported? Well, events requiring scheduled DSS typically include, but are not limited to, outdoor large venue events or events with noted vulnerabilities to weather hazard risk. You might wonder, how are the specifics of one-to-one -one support determined? Well, local management or designated staff will collaborate with the requesting party regarding the specifics for providing that DSS. This may range from on-site at the event to, or remote from the office. Many times it will come down to the combination of available staffing at the office and also the specific needs of the partner for this specific event. Another common question is what about unscheduled decision support services, such as hazmat incidents or other events? Well, that's not exactly intended for this type of calendar tool set. This support obviously should continue and is very important, but it does not necessarily go into the DSS calendar as a scheduled event. The exception would possibly be during a recurring longer-term DSS request, such as a post-event response DSS. Well, let's move on to the next part of the tool set, the actual calendar that is populated from the Google Form. This is really just a simple Google Calendar for tracking these scheduled events. It is automatically populated with all of the details provided by the requesting official and provides a central region-wide DSS calendar enhancing situational awareness for WFOs and also for the central region ROC. This also is a valuable tool when providing service backup for another office. The calendar will be available via your local WFO Google site, the Central Region Headquarters Google site, or even for display in your own personal Google Calendar. Other Central Region Office calendars will all be available as well. In order to view and edit details of an event, simply click on the event in the calendar and select more details. You also have the ability to click the map link within the description in order to view a Google map of the location. Here's a basic example of what the event details will be formatted like within the calendar event. This is for a tulip festival in Wamego, Kansas. Notice the link to the map in the where section. You'll then find a multitude of information within the description, including the briefing contact time, the approximate number of attendees, primary and secondary contacts as well as phone numbers which have been blacked out here, the hours of operation, latitude, longitude, and then down at the bottom detailed notes and requests. You can see that this particular event is one of those for which there are a lot of tents and high winds are a specific threat to their sp uh, specific operation. 
Now for some more FAQs. Who authorizes approval for scheduled event support within a local WFO? Well, that's going to come down to local management or designated staff, and they will approve the DSS provision through that collaboration with the requesting party once the request is received. How are the specifics of one-to-one -one support determined? Well, that's another thing that local management or designated staff are going to come to an agreement with the requesting party regarding all of the specifics about what we can provide and what we will provide. This is typically in addition to a certain baseline level of service. You might be wondering, after a request is received, is all that information set in stone? Can a scheduled event information be changed? The answer is yes. Changes to event time, location, or, or more should be made within the DSS calendar by going to that More Details section and making edits. Two to three individuals in each office will be charged with quality control of the information and will receive some additional guidance on how to handle certain situations. Any changes made in the calendar will be updated in AWIPS and also the log, typically within oh, an hour of making those changes, potentially sooner. How can the event details be changed? Well, again, simply go to the More Details section of the DSS calendar and make the edits to the appropriate information. Just be sure to save it when you're done. Changes in the calendar will automatically update the DSS log and the AWIPS plot. Speaking of the log, let's move on to the next topic. Apologize for the blurry image here, but we did have to fit it onto this slide. If you'd like to view the live log, please check the link at the bottom of the page. Every CWA will have their own personal log for their individual DSS events. There's also a log available for every event across Central Region at any given time. These all come from the same database and will have the exact same information within them. The beauty of this log is really in its simplicity. All you have to do when contacting your POC to provide DSS is simply go to the little green plus sign on the right side of the log and you add a note. It's free text and it's generally a good idea to note any important DSS you've provided here. One of the great things about this functionality is that it's the same for each office. This is specifically valuable when it comes to service backup operations. You can note any support provided for neighboring events and end up with a relatively seamless transition when you're handing service backup back and forth. So what should be logged in the DSS notes section? Well, really it's pretty straightforward. Just include any DSS event actions in correspondence with the POC. This is not only valuable as a general log of support, but also to pass information on to future shifts so that they know exactly what support you provided and the message that you provided to that POC. Who can see the DSS event database? Every WFO and Central Region Headquarters will be able to view the DSS activities in your CWA. The next part of the tool set that we'll be rolling out is the ability to view this information in AWIPS. This will be highly beneficial in terms of having the ability to overlay radar data, lightning data, or really any other weather data that is available in AWIPS onto the locations of all of your events. Notice that at the top of CAVE within D2D, and also within GFE, you've got a menu titled DSS. Within that, there's options to view today's DSS events, tomorrow's DSS events, or the events over the entire next seven days. You will be able to view these not only for your own CWA, but for every other CWA within Central Region. This once again provides continuity of services and of tools when it comes to service backup situations. Again, this information is easily overlaid with any other weather data that you could possibly place in AWIPS and also with your official forecast in GFE. If you sample, you, it also provides additional event details. We mentioned it briefly before, but each office will also have an addition to their WFO Google site, as well as the Central Region Google site. These will serve basically as a clearinghouse for all information and links related to this project, including the request form and events log, uh, links to neighboring office calendars, 
uh, links to the settings which will be completed by the WCM or other focal point and other documentation training and even a feedback form because we will be looking for your feedback throughout this process so again as part of this rollout as a whole you'll be seeing all of these individual tools available for your office all of these are put together with the goal of providing that decision support services on a one-to-one -one basis for the safety of many people now that we've fully discussed the tools available let's address a few more FAQs and even talk a little bit more about the process and expectations as we move forward one common question is, well, what if we're already providing one-to-one -one DSS for scheduled events? Well, that's great, really. Uh, please continue to do so using these current sets of tools. Several of the four offices within this group uh, have been doing this for multiple years, and I'm sure many of you all have too. Now we're just, again, uh, creating a standard set of tools to help us uh, move forward in a standard way also pr to provide that necessary service backup another very important question is what if we already have DSS tracking tools well there's good news first off any existing Google calendars that are being used for DSS tracking can be nearly seamlessly rolled into this version of the tools that we're rolling out I know at least a handful of other offices have been using Google Calendars to keep track of these, so we intentionally wrote the code to be able to incorporate your existing calendar. Additionally, you can actually continue to use that same exact calendar moving forward. For any other methods that you may have, well, we're going to work together toward a way to merge that information. Don't worry, we're not just going to leave you high and dry on this one. As a team, we really understand there are a lot of other great ongoing DSS efforts. It's important that we utilize the same tools in order to better support service backup through common tools and methodology, and also in doing so, better serve our partners. It's also very important that we just have a consistent method and practice and tool set moving forward. So how will this actually look? What are our expectations? Well, for starters, the National Weather Service will provide the event POC with a pre-event weather briefing at the designated time. Of course, we'll be sending the automated emails with site-specific forecast information, but it's that one-on-one -on -one briefing that a lot of times provides the necessary information to help them make their decisions. It also provides the POC an opportunity to ask very specific questions to the forecaster Moving forward from that point, the National Weather Service will then maintain a constant weather watch in support of public safety for that event. If hazardous weather is imminent or event thresholds are met, the National Weather Service will contact the event POC with that information. Of course, the POC is also encouraged to contact the NWS at any time for updated weather information as they see fit. As all this takes place, the National Weather Service staff will log the decision support actions and other correspondence. With all of this going on and with all these services expected to be provided, it's going to be important that on every shift we review the DSS events calendar and log and ensure that DSS events are properly plotted in AWIPS. Each shift should address staff assignments and actions that will be required to fulfill the DSS request through that shift. And then throughout the shift we must maintain awareness of those ongoing events both in primary and secondary backup offices should the need arise to quickly assume backup. Thanks for listening in over the past 20 minutes as we overview the tools and actions rolling out with this new implementation. Hopefully we answered a lot of the questions you may have, but if you have any additional ones, please feel free to contact Jim Keeney, Andy Foster, myself, or really any team member listed below. Again, this is for any questions that you might have moving forward with this entire project. We hope to make this as smooth and easy a transition as possible, and really we just hope to work towards the improvement of providing decision support services across the Central Region. Please keep an eye out for additional materials coming over the next few weeks, and this includes these tools actually being rolled out probably through April and May. At that time, you'll be able to further test things out and see how it'll all work as they're implemented at your local office. 
On behalf of the IDSS prototype demonstration team, thank you for your time today and we look forward to moving ahead.